So, quick review. Last time we talked about uh, Mercury, which basically is assessing situations and figuring out what to do. Basically, assessing situations, deciding if it's worth your time or worth not dealing with or accept in like accepting it as it is and and kind of just um, uh, moving on <laughs> and other things are more important kind of uh, accessing a situation and letting it go um, for Musashi it was kind of like assessing an opponent <clears throat> and seeing if it, he was worthy of facing him whether they were too not good enough or you know too good that he was gonna lose yeah, so Makiri was the word for that. And then we talked about Mujishujo. Mujishujo is a warrior's pilgrimage, traveling throughout the country, uh, going to other schools to learn new techniques, and also bringing new techniques to those schools as a worthy of a trade. So I could teach you something that I learned at this other school, and you'll give me room to sleep and allow me to train with you guys. So. Kind of cool stuff, uh, but that was back, you know, this is in the 1600s, so uh, there was no internet then, and uh, you were able to keep secret techniques then. Uh, nowadays with jujitsu, uh, I would say, I would argue that it's pretty tough to have any techniques, any secret techniques, because everything's going to be videoed and the whole world's going to see it. Um, so... We went into Mushujo, and then in Mushujo, it brought up shuriken, which was basically secret techniques that people would use uh, as stock. So you could use these secret techniques and you know teach a school, like I just said, secret techniques, and they will uh, happily accept you to uh, teach them. Um, yeah, so the art of shuriken. Shuriken basically was mainly a technique of throwing an object or throwing a weapon, uh, in particular, the sword. Whoa, all right, so this is pretty interesting. Uh, I gotta tell you real quick, uh, before Miyamoto Musashi was called Miyamoto Musashi, he was called, well his dad was Munenori, Munenori. His son, Musashi, so the son of Munenori, was called Takamura Yomon. He was also in a great adept, not less great than his father, and he especially excelled at the art of shuriken. He was capable of throwing a sword, which was 40 centimeters long, and piercing a peach floating in the river. This is a writing from uh, a guy named Watanabe Kon. So basically, he tells a story about how he observed Musashi, the son of Munenori, able to throw a 40 centimeter long sword and pierce a peach floating in the water. So this just goes through and talks about a number of places where Musashi taught this technique to different people on his pilgrimages in his travels. All right, so there's this one guy who basically uh, fought Musashi multiple times and lost multiple times, but he kept fighting him until he was able to defeat the shuriken. So once he was able to stop this uh, throwing the sword attack. So it's basically like, I got beat, you get beat by something and these guys, they would, you know, he would keep attacking Musashi until he learned to, you know, most likely they practice because it does talk about how many of these, um, duels that they would have would be with wooden swords. So they didn't always fight with bladed weapons. Uh, even though, even if you used a wooden weapon, you could kill somebody. Uh, in fact, Musashi kills multiple people with a wooden sword or bakken. Um, yeah, pretty interesting. So uh, there's one thing I'm reading right here is talking about this one guy, Yagu Azwa Masio, fought him three times. Azwa Masio, according to him, Musashi fought Iago three times and defeated him three times. Convinced of the effectiveness of his weapon, Iago preserved until he was able to defeat the attack of the shuriken. So, yeah, I can assume that they used a wooden sword and threw it at him and kept doing it until he was able to defend it. Against the shuriken, you must make every effort to get a look at at the inside of your adversary's hands. You must parry by crossing the shuriken with your sword. Against a shuriken expert, you are too late if you react 
after having seen the thrower's movement. You must strike him before his movement takes shape. Yeah, the, so, all right, here's another part. If you're familiar with the novel, in the novel there's um, the old lady. I'm, I'm blanking on her name right now, but she's a, a major character in the book. Uh, she uses needles, and she will hide needles in her hair, in her mouth, and she could flick them and throw them. And in here, it sounds like... it's fiction, you know, that somebody can use needles to, and throw them. They, they use them, they would throw them and try and stick people in the eye and use them as a distraction and then come in with another weapon. So, during this Edo period, the art of shuriken was developed by several schools of swordsmanship. A passage in the text called Oshu Banshee transmitted the fife of Sendai elucidates this process. Elucidates. Elucidates? Ueno Uzi Izu was a vassal of the fife of Sendai around 1770. He was an accomplished practitioner of the martial arts and he developed a unique form of the art of shuriken. He held the needle between his fingers and never missed his mark. He said he had developed this technique with the thought that he could that he would be able to defeat any opponent if he could hit them in the eyes with needles. He always carried needles in his hair, four in each temple. He said, the art of shuriken is not one that can be transmitted. I acquired this art by training assiduously in throwing needles. So basically, that's pretty interesting. What this guy's saying is like, it's not just like a simple technique that I can just teach you in a day. It's something you have to work on all the time, assiduously in throwing needles. And that, of course, that translates to any kind of art. You know, to be good at it, it takes practice. You can't just learn it in one day. This is the actual part where Miyamoto Musashi comes across a duel and he uses the shuriken. Let me find the beginning of this. Oh, ah, here it is. Musashi fought in the province of Iga against Shoshido, an adept of the Kasuri Gama. That's a sickle with a chain attached to it and it had a steel weight on the end. The combat took place in a natural setting. Before Shishido could strike with his sickle, Musashi threw his short sword, which pierced Shishido's chest. Immediately closing in, Musashi cut him down with his long sword. Shishido's disciples seized weapons and attacked Musashi. Under the brunt of Musashi's counterattack, they dispersed in all directions, and during this time, Musashi calmly departed. Just before this in the book, the, the author explains how there's a lot of different people who believe that Musashi was left-handed, but even though he was left-handed, he trained as, as right-handed because that's pretty customary in Japan. Even as calligraphers, they would learn to paint. If they were left-handed, they were instructed to paint with their right hand regardless. So they believed Musashi was the same way. So typically you would use the short sword with your left hand and use your right sword with the longer, heavier sword in your right. So... Um, so they believe that he basically threw with his left hand uh, as a surprise attack. So basically it explains, in, in a confrontation it is extremely difficult for a right-hander to hit his mark throwing a sword with his left hand, and especially since a sword is not made to be thrown. It is particularly difficult to make it penetrate point first. I think this position is defensible up to a certain point because Musashi did not found his school to train disciples but to train himself. Each of his disciples had to find his own way of realizing Musashi's art based on Musashi's teachings but without merely trying to copy him. We know of one of the branches of Musashi's school called School Where Innovation is Known Through Ancient Knowledge in which the way the two swords were held is the reverse of Musashi's school. The long sword is held in the left hand, the short sword is held in the right. All right, this is where it gets interesting. Musashi's duels. Musashi wrote that before the age of 30, he had fought more than 60 duels, in most of which his opponents met death. He also took part in two wars. For Musashi, the duel represented a confrontation in which he could make use of all his abilities, both technical and strategic. But it was also a privileged learning opportunity. 
He accumulated his skills and knowledge through encountering the techniques of his adversaries, each of them different, and also through relating to the different overall situations imposed on him by these duels. Thus, the art of his youth developed through his contact with other adepts. Consequently, in trying to understand Musashi's personality, it is useful to study his main duels, following their chronological order, looking into the technical lineage of, the, of his opponents, and discussing the different possible interpretations that arise when his duels are presented differently in several documents. So basically what we're saying is like, what we're gonna look at is, what we're about to look at is different perspectives of his duels. So, you know, most of the stories that people hear or know of are basically what Musashi wrote about himself. This is kind of giving you a different perspective. Mm -hmm.